So hello, everybody, and welcome to our last webinar for the CCMA Shared Resource Lab Perspective Series, uh, the Vendor Showcase Showdown. <laughs> Hold on here. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. Drum roll. Oh, cat. No. <laughs> we were supposed to have, have the jingle. To, I do, but there's all the admit all is coming with with their problems. Okay, well, I won't sing the showcase showdown, but the show must go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Okay>. so <clears throat> my apologies. Don't apologize. Today we'll be hosting a vendor showcase showdown where our generous sponsors will be presenting. As we are all aware, scientific discovery relies heavily on the innovative solutions from our vendor partners. These solutions include everything from new state-of-the-art equipment to sophisticated reagent development to valuable software. Today, we would like to thank our generous sponsors and are very excited to hear them present to us on new and exciting developments that they have to offer. Uh, we welcome our participants to stay tuned until the very end of all the presentations where we'll, we'll make some announcements and have a draw for four $50 Amazon gift cards, as well as one free registration for the 2023 CCMA in-person meeting. Uh, we have a packed schedule, so I'll remind you, uh, I'll remind our sponsors to please keep their presentations on time. Um, when you are out of time, you will be notified and you will hear a sound clip <laughs> as well. Something like this. <laughs> okay. Um, I love it. Oh. Since we will not have time for questions, we'll ask vendors to kindly put their affiliation next to their name in Zoom so that folks attending know who to contact after today's presentations. So without further ado, we welcome BD Biosciences to come on down. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> we do have uh, that clip. <laughs> I guess everybody should mute themselves for sure. So we don't make little comments. <laughs> there you, you. Mm -hmm. Get this going. All right. Is it displaying correctly? Looks good, yes. Ellie. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I, my name is Emily Commission. I'm the uh, technical application specialist uh, with BD Bioscience, and I have the absolute pleasure uh, to show you some new innovations and technology coming from BD. So, I think a lot of you are familiar with some of these tools that we use very frequently in immunology. So, traditionally, we've had two relatively common ways to quantify total cell number, types of cells in a heterogeneous samples. We have microscopy that gives us information about shape and distribution and all those nice things. But we also know that you can look at a smaller number of cells with this technology. Whereas with flow cytometry, we have a much higher throughput uh, system. We get some details about size, granularity, surface, intracellular components. Um, all of those things and the speed of this technology also allows us to isolate different cell populations through cell sorting. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to combine these two things together? So I'm very, very excited to speak to you guys about um, the BD CellView image technology, um, where you can actually benefit from both of these technologies together. We have high-speed, high-parameter flow cytometry, high-content images that provide information about cell morphology and cell-cell interactions, among many other things, um, and the speed that we've come to treasure from flow cytometry, so fast analysis and also cell sorting, um, combining all of these traditional parameters. So the BD CellView image technology is a novel approach that borrows technology from the wireless communication industry, actually, and um, uses, in addition to this, conventional electronics and optical components that we have been using in flow cytometers. So what this gives us is real-time cell images for our flow cytometry uh, samples. 
So you can actually mouse over any of our traditional dot plot points um, where you can actually see real time images of the cells that actually um, correspond to those uh, points. So everything is uh, correlated one to one. So we have image and flow data all merged into a single uh, data point uh, with real time images displayed. So hopefully this plays correctly, but I have a, a short video that actually goes through all of this and what it looks like. Hello, and welcome to the CellView technology demonstration video. In this video, we will be going through a short example of the usage of the CellView technology. I have here a tube of HeLa cells with three... Come on. ...stains. There is DROC5, which is going to act as a nuclear stain. There is also a surface marker stain. And finally, there is an intracellular GFP fusion. So between these three stains, we should be able to visualize different compartments of the cell. Let's go ahead and load the sample here. I've already gone ahead and adjusted the detector gains for the sample, so everything we see should already be on scale. Now you're going to have to do this for any cytometry experiment, and this remains the case with CellView. As the data starts streaming into the system, we can see that dots begin to appear on our scatter plots, and on the right here we have a new feature called the image wall. On the image wall you can see pictures of all of the cells as they are collected by the system. These are the 50 most recent cells that have gone through the system, and if I mouse over them, you can see that these images are tied to the plots. So I can look at any image on the wall and see it highlight on the plots, and vice versa, I can hover over any dot on my plots and figure out what the image looks like. Now, as you can see from the image wall, this sample actually contains a mixture of cells of different sizes, some doublets, and some debris. We're going to go ahead and clean that up uh, using an image parameter. Now down here, on the bottom left, you can see I've created a side scatter versus eccentricity plot. Now here I'm going to draw a gate and select the cells of low eccentricity, which means that they tend to be more circular. If I mouse over the cells of higher eccentricity, you can see that they tend to be two cells stuck together. And by drawing this on a bivariate plot, I can also exclude larger clumps of cells that maybe are not asymmetric. Now, if I go up here to the image wall and refine it to select the uh, singlets, you can see that uh, these cells have been cleaned up quite a bit. Now, that's all fine and good, but let's dive into an application that you really can only do with imaging. If you take a look at the second plot, you can see I've plotted the FITSI area uh, on the x-axis. If I grab just the FITSI positives, and I switch the wall over to the FITSI positives, we should be able to see that most of these cells consist of punctate spots of fluorescence, meaning all the fluorescence is concentrated in just a small region of the cell. However, occasionally, you may be able to see that there are some cells that have diffuse fluorescence, meaning the expression is spread throughout the cell. So what we have here is a FITSI max intensity plot. Now, max intensity is an imaging parameter that gives you information about the brightness of the brightest pixels in the image. Now, and if I zoom in here, you can see that there are actually two populations here uh, within these FITSI positives. And now let's see, if I draw a gate around this population, and then draw another gate around this population, uh, we should be able to select them and see that this population indeed is diffuse expression, and then this other population as punctate expression, uh, despite both of them appearing on the same part of this plot. So let's go ahead and create a recording. I have now created a recording of 12,650 events, and you can see we have collected quite a few more dots on our plots and quite a few more examples of diffuse cells. If we go ahead and select our diffuse cells and just turn on some other parameters, then we can start to visualize some of the other markers that make up our cell. So if I turn off this light loss overlay, you can see we clearly have a surface marker, a nuclear stain, and our GFP fusion, all present and visualized for every single cell that we collected. Okay, this has been our CellView technology demonstration video. Thank you for watching. There we go. So.
can just stop this. I don't know how you're running this pair of questions. You actually yet. have a bit of time left. So is there okay, any, anybody have questions? You want to say something else? Nobody has questions. That was super cool. That was super yeah, cool. Yeah, it was very cool. cool. Oh. So. What, so, I mean, I guess we're all familiar with the other imaging cytometers on the market. Mm -hmm. How is this technology different than what exists already? And, you know, we're all interested in improvements. So what's the fancy? What's it? different? So I'll say yeah. what I can. If there are questions regarding specifics around instruments, I can't answer them here, but you can reach out to BD and we can have further discussions. Okay. Um, so that is possible. It just has to be done in a different setting. Um, okay. but just it, like, it. <laughs> well, we, we appreciate you bringing things out that are hot off the press to, to yeah. show off at our, at our webinar here to talk about today. So um, just briefly, I can't answer your question though. This is a camera free technology. So we're not reliant on a camera, like some of the other instruments would be, which can actually slow things. So this, um, this new technology that we've borrowed from the telecommunications industry actually allows us to run at speeds that we would um we would we would anticipate for a standard flow cytometer so roughly 10,000 events per second which is much faster than has been traditionally achievable with imaging yeah mm -hmm. and also like with the existing imaging cytometers i think one of the biggest is complaints is how slow it runs um do you know you know the events per second what is the volume do you know if it's sipping quite a small volume at a time or I, it should the the fluidic should be very similar to what we're responding traditionally kind of accustomed to yeah awesome yeah wow i'm excited to see what comes of this so so i'm guessing you guys are showing this off at cyto this year i would think that's a safe bet um i would also say that for those of you that did see the cover of science magazine um recently this technology is the technology that is featured in that publication. So you can go and take a look if you want to read a little bit more. So. That's, That's great, great. Emily. Maybe we can ask you for the link to that. Someplace. Yeah, uh, I'll yeah. um I'll pop some stuff in the chat for people that want. We also have a link for people that want to reach out for a deeper discussion. So I'll put all of that in the chat so you guys can access. Yeah, I think people might just need to like digest a little bit. And it's <laughs> usually, a lot. Yeah. Usually you get questions after a little a pause. <laughs> Did I get that correct? Did you say 10,000 cells per second, including the images? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, you know, normally I, you, it doesn't need to be 10,000 cells per second, to be honest, for it to be functional anyway. So yeah, that's, that's a nice high upper end limit. Yeah. It allows for a really high content experiment. So is it also considered a high, like in terms of parameters, are we looking at sort of lower parameters or are we also aiming at like the symphony levels of parameters that's a piece that i can only discuss in certain areas so <laughs> i'm sorry but... stay tuned <laughs> yeah send me an email there we'll chat <laughs> <laughs> sounds good sounds good so at the very least those of you who are going to be Cito, going to Cito in person or the virtual, hopefully we'll hear some more news about that because that's very exciting. Okay, so we that. still we still have a couple of minutes. It, Emily, if there's nothing more, because it is your time for BD, if there's nothing more, then we can move forward to the next talk. I didn't get a chance to do the cut off, cut you off thing. <laughs> <laughs> So we welcome now Giselle Knowles from Sony to present. Sure. Yeah. So just let me give you a second. Grab this. And go to my persona view. Okay. Can everybody see all right? Nobody can see my speaker notes. Hopefully we got this sorted out. Is that correct? Very good. Yes. Good, lovely. Thank you so much for the opportunity to present Sony to you today. Um, we, you know, Sony is a very innovative company, um, you know, known for gaming, home electronics, um, robotics, engineering. So they've taken all of those things um, into the realm of biotechnology. 
And I wanted to showcase our, you know, five current platforms that we have and um, tell you our newest release um, just launched at the Advanced Therapies Week in Miami, um, the CGX10, which is a fully 100% GMP compliant from top to bottom, uh, closed system cell sorter where the stuff that's coming out is gonna go right back into patient for patient therapy work. Um, eight parameters to scatter, uh, high speed purity, the whole nine yards. Um, it's pretty amazing uh, technology. Um, but of course we are here because we wanna to talk to you about the ID7000 spectral system from Sony. Um, we brought you the first commercially available spectral analyzer almost 10 years ago, which is mind boggling really. And look at where we are today. So um, at a glance, the ID uh, of course made in Japan um, is about two feet by three feet uh, with all the usual high-end components of robotics, computing, built standardized. We use 32 channel PMTs for superior management of dim and autofluorescent populations. Fully loaded system has seven lasers, 184 detectors sampling at 10 nanometer increments. Um, the auto sampler is definitely uh, one of the key features um, uh, on the system. It's uh, delivering high throughput walkaway acquisition with extremely low carryover. Uh, you can use 24 tube racks or up to 384 well plates directly onto the system. No additional hardware is necessary. There's a low dead volume um, mode where it'll drink right to the bottom of the well. And you also get very, very low residual volume in your sample line. Um, and then you have everything programmable, auto acquisition, cleaning, shutdown, et cetera, to round out the key features. And here's basically a synopsis of the build and its capabilities. Um, the parametric data output starts with this ribbon plot, and then you can convert that to whatever kind of uh, parametric data plot you want. And even on the lowest bench of three lasers, you get an 86 PMT uh, in uh, interrogation. The seven laser system has 184. Um, and then, you know, when you consider that, you know, higher number of detectors makes, makes or breaks uh, the choice of fluorochromes, you get a lot of options available to you um, with this. Um, the onboard spectral library is an amazing tool. Uh, and what we have is um, one of the features you can use it. You can run your spectral once, store it, and then reuse it again. You can run them again if you would like to uh, update them, if you will. Uh, but one of the features you can use of library for in panel design is to see how other lasers interfere uh, or play with the fluorochromes in general. Um, you can get, uh, you know, a really good synopsis of your panel and the system. We have about a thousand preloaded names. Then you can add custom entries as they become available um, or you can invent them, if you will. And if you're going to rise up your panel to um, you know, 25 to 30 colors and greater, you definitely need to use some of the close emitters um, that you uh, will have to populate your panel with. And so this is just an ex example of some of the close emitters coming off of, uh, in this instance, the 405, for example, BB510 and EFLOR506. Here's PECF568 uh, um, comparatives. And this, the combinations are very nice. I mean, the more detectors you have, the better sampling you get. Um, and so you get to better resolution with these close emitters. And this is the stuff off the red line. Um, so it's all about enhancing signal detection that spectral flow cytometry is known about. And if you wanna talk about increasing your data, um, if you look at adding an extra laser, in this case, the DPUV320 nanometer line, this is something that's really kind of amazing um, because you, you get an additional 35 channels, which is great. Plus you can access, uh, um, access a bunch of other dyes. But what was really cool was we did a 51 and 40 color panel um, test with the 320 on and off. And you can see that when the 320 laser is on, the spread values of the CVs of the spread were substantially great or uh, less and much more improved in your, in your signal. So that's something to think about when you have in, increased amount of interrogation points. You're also not only gonna increase your chloroprome database, but you're gonna improve the resolution of especially close emitters with decreased CVs on your spreads. I said at the beginning, we use our PMTs uh, on our system. We chose to use PMTs because we are all about the minimizing the signal to noise ratio and maintaining that larger dynamic uh, range. And so we use the individual or the multi-channels um, of PMTs and, um, you know, that's kind of good. We have a little white paper on this if that's of interest to anybody, let me know. 
Um, and I just wanted to show a little bit about small particles because everybody's kind of interested in that. And um, this is with the thermal beads as well as the Apogee beads. We don't have any hardware add-ons to augment. So this is au naturel. And um, we are getting down to 100 nanometers, um, you know, on each of those particles. So that's um, pretty decent. It's, you know, there, there are better, but there's that's nothing to complain about. Um, autofluorescence, of course, is what we're all about in terms of removing that out of your, um, out of your cellular populations to improve your background. You have the autofluorescence wizard that's going to take uh, some really horrible uh, luminescence and endogenous fluorescence from your cells and get rid of it and make sure all of you stuff, you have as many populations as you want, you can kind of go mine for it. And the workflow is very simple, just run some unstained cells and let the wizard do its trick. Um, in this case, you can remove the background or you can actually um, create a signature and, and a novel signature for a particular type of autofluorescence, which of course is a beautiful segue into the data from um, the Pasteur Institute and Anna Comano's group, where they were actually um, found three unique spectral autofluorescence signatures for these rare fetal liver stromal subsets uh, for which there's limited, if not no antibodies directly for them. And they are now using that routinely in their patterns. So there's no luminescence uh, given by the fluorescence. It's all about the endogenous autofluorescence signatures. So that's pretty cool. And of course, you guys want to see big panels. So this is our current demo panel, 42 colors uh, with a five laser bench. And um, you know the usual suspects, as well as some different ones that are available uh, for you. And we have a 50 color demo panel uh, for the six laser system. And we have a lot of publications coming out with our users now, which is awesome of the 40 colors and greater. So it'll be a lot more uh, availability of some of these things. We have um, in the software, the ability to see everything versus each other. So this is just a sort of a gating strategy graphic, but you can go into a sort of sub windows and look at all the fluorochromes versus each other, make sure all the unmixing is good, that there's no um, something doesn't look off, uh, look right, you can address it, uh, swap things out, put them back in, um, and then go ahead and export to FCS files or raw files, whatever it is you need for your downstream analysis. And hot off the press is the workflow to create this 42 color um, uh, data set with all the tricks available. So it's an awesome little document. Um, next up for us, we brought you the automated cell sorters. We brought you spectral flow cytometers, so it's a little nugget left for you. On behalf of Rick and myself, I want to thank you all for your time today. And I'm done. Thank you very much, uh, Giselle, for staying on time and sharing that uh, innovative equipment with us. Yes. Going really well Thanks. so far. Lots of cool stuff Vera, happening. How are we for time? Do we have time for questions? Uh, we probably do because Emily finished a couple of minutes early. So if there are questions around. So this workflow for the 42 panel, um, mm -hmm. is it just available on your website? Do we reach out to you guys oh, for it? Uh, whichever. We just we literally just got it. So yeah, happy to send it to you, Vera. Yeah, no problem. Cool. Um, it's a good little work, uh, good, uh, good paper that's come out. They just, they did, you know, because I mean, it's one thing to say, oh yeah, we're doing a 42 color, woo, whoop de do. But if you don't really teach how you're getting to that point, um, you know, and all the pitfalls, because there are tons of pitfalls, it's yeah. not an easy challenge, as you must realize yourself. Yeah. And so it's actually quite beneficial, and we're actually going to go that route of, you know, really kind of working through with everybody how we're getting to these panel um, designs. So are these? Because of course, it's specific to our instrument. Yeah, and are they reagents that you guys are going to be selling in a kit form, or is it uh, you have the catalog numbers for all the antibodies? Um, I don't know about that. I think you'd have to basically tell me. You know, essentially, we'd have we could resign your panel for you um, if you give us the um, the an the antigens you want to work with, and you know, you have some sort of starting point at least, and how what you want to get to, what your what your goal, if you will. So yeah. Awesome. All right. Anybody else want to pipe in? No questions? All right. Yeah, I'm available there's whenever. The no here. Hey, there's a question just... in the chat. Oh, oh, question in the chat. I did not have the chat window open. My apologies. Yeah. Somebody want to read it out? 
Uh, it says, how is secondary autofluor calculated? It says PE excites granules with 585, exciting granules to admit at another wavelength with FMO, question mark. Ah, thanks don't, for the question, don't Derek. Understand, I don't understand the question, but um, how is secondary autofluor can calculate? Well, anyways, we can maybe think about this uh, later on if you want. Yeah, Derek, Sounds happy good. to talk to you if you would like. Awesome. So, Kat, next speaker. Can you guys hear me and can you see my screen? I see Sony slide. Excellent. So now SciTech is next. All the remaining talks, we're not going to be switching screens. So I will be presenting. Please say next or advanced uh, uh, if you're a presenter. Um, here you will be monitoring the time. So up next is SciTech. Hello. First. Thank you to Vera Tang and the CCMA team for putting together this wonderful webinar series. My name is Laurent Genestadaraki, Global Product Manager at SciTech Biosciences. SciTech has been around since 1992. We were originally a third-party field service company for flow cytometers. We then made our big splash in 2017 with the introduction of our full-spectrum flow cytometer. So what is SciTech's approach to full-spectrum flow cytometry? At its core, we are recording and utilizing the entire spectrum of emitted light for each fluorochrome, excited by each laser on board the instrument. By doing so, we are enabling powerful applications unique to full spectrum flow cytometry. For example, you can now run dyes that on conventional systems would overlap completely in their peak emission, such as APC and Alexa 647. This opens the door to more possibilities when choosing what fluorochromes to include in our panel design. It also allows you to analyze more colors, up to 40 colors on our five laser SciTech Aurora, and therefore more markers per sample. Finally, our full spectrum approach allows to, us to not only characterize autofluorescence, autofluorescence intrinsic to certain sample types, such as tumor or lung tissue, but also extract the signal to improve resolution of fluorochromes with similar emission spectra. We provide a variety of white papers, webinars, and case studies of specific applications benefited by using SciTech's full spectrum profiling approach. These can all be found on our website at www.scitechbio.com. For all these benefits to full spectrum flow cytometry uh, to really make an impact, we, the SciTech team, spent a tremendous effort to make our SpectraFlow software as approachable as possible even improving on familiar workflows. For example, since SciTech's full spectrum instruments, including the Aurora Northern Lights Analyzers and the brand new Aurora Cell Sorter record all emitted light from each fluorochrome, as long as it is excited by the lasers on board, you can run it without having to confirm the existing optical configuration. All our full spectrum systems also come standard with pre-optimized SciTech assay settings removing the need to optimize the voltage or gain on each individual detector for every new assay. After that, the steps will look very similar. You record your compensation controls on a conventional instrument, which we now call reference controls. This is followed by compensation, or in our case, spectral unmixing. And finally, the, fi the result is the final multicolor data. You can actually take this one step further. Since each fluorochrome has its own full spectrum signature, we can store this in the software's reference control library. This can then be called back and reused in subsequent assays and experiments. With a robust and well-maintained library of reference controls, researchers can go straight to acquiring samples, saving significant amounts of time and reagent costs. On the instrument side, we have our Northern Lights and Aurora single cell analyzers, which come equipped with up to three lasers and up to five lasers, respectively. We also recently launched the SciTech Aurora CS, a cell sorter with the same full spectrum technology on board. Our full suite of instruments take advantage of our full spectrum profiling approach, providing not only excellent sensitivity and resolution for your dim staining populations, but also more flexibility in your panel design and in your assay choices. Applications on our full spectrum instruments are further enabled by our seafloor multicolor kits. 
To empower scientific discovery, SciTech scientists designed and developed a series of immunoprofiling kits to jumpstart your immunology research. When used with our full spectrum flow cytometers, these provide turnkey solutions for basic to in-depth research needs for immunophenotyping of human PBMC and whole blood. Users with different levels of expertise are now empowered to get optimal results. These pre-optimized kits take away the need for time-consuming labor and labor-intensive panel design and optimization. SciTech also provides a comp comprehensive protocols for sample preparation and staining, as well as pre-built experiment and analysis templates to streamline workflow and improve lab efficiency. Finally, SciTech has a variety of tools and support options to assist and guide you along in your full spectrum journey. This ranges from hands-on training and demos and personal support by our excellent team of Technical Application Scientists, or TAS. We also have a variety of online educational resources, both on our website and on our user community or forum. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, want more information, or want to test out our full spectrum systems for yourself, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at sales at scitechbio.com. You can also reach me directly at my personal email address, lginestet at scitechbio.com. Thank you again. Hey. Okay, so next up was Luminex, and Luminex gave me a couple videos to play, so I'm just going to play them, and hopefully you can hear the sound. Oops, sorry. Hello, this is Brian Hall with Luminex Corporation. And I'd like to talk to you today about some new software we've developed to help analyze your imaging flow cytometry data. This software is designed to work on both the image stream and flow site imaging flow cytometers. These systems collect bright field, side scatter, and up to 10 colors of fluorescence simultaneously and at high throughput, allowing users to collect tens of thousands of images. The user then can use the statistical image analysis software to effectively mine that image database and discover unique populations based not only on fluorescence intensity, but the morphology of that fluorescence as well. IDEAS has been our traditional analysis software and this uses masking and feature calculation to perform image analysis. However, to accommodate the increasing complexity and need for automation of image-based experiments, we've added two new approaches to doing data analysis, the, mach the machine learning module and Amnes AI. IDEAS allows the user to create dot plots and histograms, create statistics tables, and customize the display to view the cells as single colors or any combination of overlaid images that the user needs. It also integrates seamlessly with the Amnes AI software and houses the machine learning module and allows our users to generate publication quality reports. The machine learning module allows the user to hand tag two or more populations and then create a customized feature optimized to increase the separation of the negative and positive control samples for the user's individual experiment. It works by creating and combining the best features available and ideas using a modified linear discriminant analysis algorithm to create a super feature that is specifically tailored to the user's experimental goals. The Amnes AI software is a standalone software package that allows the users to leverage a power, the power of artificial intelligence to analyze their image data. The software will also generate a model by deep learning using convolutional neural networks to classify all user-defined populations in a sample. It, include, it includes computer-aided hand tagging, clustering in object map plots, and creates a confusion matrix and accuracy analytics to determine how effective the model is at predicting future test samples. In summary, Luminex is now offering a comprehensive suite of image analysis software, including new tools using artificial intelligence to simplify and strengthen the analysis of your image-based experiments. If you have any questions or would like more information, Please don't hesitate to contact us at support at luminexcorp.com and thank you for your time.
All right. Next. Uh, we have Biostatus. I'm here, ready. All right, so thank you very much. I will let you begin, go ahead. Oh. How do you design a new viability die? Next slide, please. First, capture customer inspiration. Hey Roy, make a viability die just like DRAC5, I heard. The genesis occurred in the head of our brilliant medicinal chemist, Lawrence Patterson, in a board meeting, yet leaving my requirements still in silico. But proof of concept was hardly a stretch with Paul Smith and Rachel Errington on our board to benchmark with an XN5 JC1 and against PI and test toxicity, stability, simplicity, spectral compatibility, and so on. Meantime, novelty requires patent protection and creativity deserves it. Drac 7 is designed for purpose, not some leftover. Yet productization demands solubility, robust and repeatable synthesis, QC, and preferably ambient shipping and ready to use from the fridge. Next slide, please. The misconception is you have a blockbuster. Uh, please avoid that arrogance. Let the market decide and await the hallelujah moment. Within weeks of launch, the product rescued a manuscript at QMUL in London from a reviewer's demand that seemed undoable. And then the seminal cytometry part A paper led by the late, great uh, Zibsek uh, Darzenkiewicz. These all led to breakthrough applications in time-lapse cell health tracking in 2D and 3D as a standard in single cell in nuclei sorting and a single tube apoptosis assay combining Nexin and TMRE. And the creativity of Ian Dimmick picked up by Alfonso Blanco turned a troublesome feature to remarkable advantage using multi-beam excitation to drop DRAC7 into a crowded panel without compensation. Next slide, please. So email me or visit our blog for more information and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Roy. Um, Vera, would you like to make a small note about Apogee, please? You're on mute. Sorry, guys. So Apogee was unable to join us today, but they are the makers of a small particle flow cytometer, um, as well as a cell size flow cytometer, and also the micro GXP, which is their clinical version of their micro flow cytometer. Uh, these cytometers have shown performances in detecting extracellular vesicles, uh, viruses, and other nanoparticles. So if you're interested, do give them a shout at info. Um, their email address is info at apogee.com. Thank you, and Vera. Jason. Yes. Thanks for joining us. Oh, uh, thank you for having us. Jason, shall I just play the? Yes, the yes. You're gonna you just go ahead and play the video, and when it finishes, I'll, I'll you know talk for maybe thirty seconds. Great. Thank you. Here we go. This is so dramatic. I love it. Last year, we launched the Cytoflex SRT, which is a benchtop sorter. Uh, this is an extension of our Cytoflex platform, and it's built on the same optical features as our Cytoflex analyzer. 
The site expert software for the SRT features automated workflows with innovative setup, monitoring, and stream maintenance. But one of the best thing is that novice users can learn to operate this very quickly, which allows researchers to spend more time on biological questions and experimental design. The instrument can be configured up to use four lasers up to 15 color detection to identify subtle differences in cells. It's also capable of complex sort logic with different combinations of sort settings on each of the four streams, including the ability to catch aborts of other streams. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact your local Beckman Culture sales representative or you can email us on beckman.com. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Jason, that was awesome. Um, Sorry, I'm Jason. You were like five <laughs> seconds over just so I can play that. And uh, I also give your amazing. presentation the award for best. Uh, I know. Best, I think best they, drama. did you guys hire like Hans Zimmer to, to, to <laughs> score that? <laughs> Is this something we had in our archive? So that's awesome. awesome. All Thank right, you. next. All right, next up Biotechni. Um, yeah, so. Hi, I'm Emily. Thank you for the opportunity to present today at Biotechni. We're here to help streamline your flow cytometry. If you could, uh, oh, never mind. Designing a flow panel from scratch is time consuming. I don't have to explain that to anyone here. So you choose the markers, find the antibodies, figure out what fluorochromes you can use, titrate, test the panel. If you could advance. Um, Biotechni's multicolor flow kits remove several of these steps by pre-selecting marker fluorochrome combinations with clones validated for flow cytometry and testing the panel. So the two products I'm going to tell you about today are our new flow kits for uh, natural killer cell phenotype and function. Next slide. The first, the phenotype kit contains six conjugated antibodies, four of which have been validated for specificity by the HLDA. This panel is compatible with any cytometer that has a violet, blue, and red laser. The antibody fluorochrome choices are designed for minimal spectral overlap and simple compensation setup. There's also plenty of space left to add additional markers of interest um, to expand your panel. Uh, there's here's some example data showing this panel on uncultured PBMCs day zero and expanded NK cells on day 13. Next slide, please. The second product is our flow-based NK cell killing assay. And this is a completely flow-based killing assay allowing for determination of NK cell killing capacity and activation in the same sample. If using NK cells pre-expanded with our NK clouds beads, the assay time can be as little as two hours. Next slide, please. And so here's a brief schematic of our suggested protocol with some data images. So first you label the effector NK cells with our Genelia Floor 646 dye and our target cells with Mitomark dye. You co-culture effectors and targets as determined by your experimental conditions with CD107A to measure NK cell degranulation. When the assay is over, you add the other antibodies, viability dye and cell counting beads all included in the kit to determine the number of NK cells activated as shown by CD107A and the number of dead target cells is shown by Mitomark low. Um, so these are just two of the pop projects that we've been working on at Biotechni to help streamline your flow cytometry. So thanks. And I can put my email in the chat for any follow-up. Oh, right on time. Very good. You nailed it. You nailed it, which is good because I lost my link to the losing horn. <laughs> so thank you very much, Emily. Um, next up we have BioLegend. I'm uh, Karen Morley. Uh, I'm going to put my video off because my um, my uh, connection has been a little unstable today. So. Okay. okay, so thank you for being here today. I'm Karen. I'm a uh, technical application scientist with BioLegend. And in two minutes, I'll try to tell you about our uh, reagents and resources for flow cytometry. Next. So as your long-term partner uh, in providing quality flow cytometry reagents, we are continuously pursuing the development of novel fluorescent uh, dyes. So new instruments such as your full spectrum flow cytometers or cytometers that have all the new fancy laser lines allows for large multicolor panels that previously were unachievable. So this has increased the need for new fluorophores to expand multicolor panels for more comprehensive cell phenotyping. Next. So this is where our exclusive spark and fire tandem dyes come in. Uh, spark dyes are small organic fluorophores that possess relatively narrow excitation emis emission spectra, which allows them to be slotted into previously unoccupied spectral spaces. 
and fire dyes or acceptor dyes are prepared with psychobilly protein based donor dyes like PE and APC. Oops. Next. Sorry. Oh. So here are all of our spark and fire tandem dyes that we've developed so far. They include Sorry. violet, violet excited spark V538, the blue excited spark blue 550. Uh, there's yellow green excited spark dyes and PE tandem, tandem dyes, as well as our red excited spark NRR 685 and APC fire tandems. Next. So this is a full list of all of our fluorophores. Uh, the ones in purple are BioLegend developed. And I wanted to also point out the uh, Caravia, Caravia Blue 520 that was developed and validated in partnership with Sony. Next. We also have a variety of buffers available for sample prep, surface, and intracellular staining. Next. Plus other flow reagents like our Lyophilized Human PDMC control cells and Legend screen kits. Next. Uh, and everything that I just gabbled about uh, can be found through the flow cytometry tools page on our website. I highly encourage you guys to explore it. It has a wide variety of resources to guide your flow experiments. And we also recently released a flow cytometry resource guide. There's a 30 minute walkthrough of the guide on CCMA's YouTube channel. So have a look or download a copy of the guide. And thank you for listening. Next. Thank you very much, Karen. Right Thank on you. time. Yeah. Um, look forward to checking out that guide. Awesome. All right. Next up, we have TCAN. Hello. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Rob Day, and I'm an application scientist at TCAN. And today I'll be providing a quick overview on the Spark Cyto, the first live cell imaging multimode reader that features real-time analysis. Uh, the Spark Cyto is based on our flagship Spark multimode reader with dedicated modules for standard measurement modes, such as absorbance, uh, luminescence, as well as fluorescence. Uh, we've got integrated environmental controls, uh, automated lid lifter, uh, as well as optional injectors for reagent and cell dispensing, which really make the Spark a valuable to tool for any cell biology lab. Now, the Spark Cyto expands on the capabilities of our standard Spark through the addition of a module specifically for live cell fluorescent imaging and real-time cytometry. So this gives you the ability to multiplex imaging and long-term cell analysis with standard measurement modes. Uh, next slide, please. Now, the Spark Cyto, for as far as imaging goes, comes with three objectives, uh, 2x, 4x, and 10x, with 20x digital zoom for four channels of fluorescent imaging, as well as bright field and digital phase contrast. Uh, the software packages are extremely easy to use and contain several predefined methods for common applications, such as cell confluence assessment, as well as cell viability. Uh, we also have user-defined options that give you full flexibility in uh, adjusting your imaging parameters. In addition, all of your analysis data gets captured and provided to you in real time. Now, one really unique capability of the Spark Cyto is something we call real-time experimental control, which will let you set an action within your workflow based on real results. So for example, you might wanna set up a kinetic method where maybe once cells reach a, a certain confluency level, let's say 70% confluency, then a specified action gets performed such as a reagent injection or maybe a triggering of a measurement mode such as a fluorescent intensity read. So this allows you to automate and further streamline your work. <laughs> uh, last slide, please. Okay, I think this is yeah. Your contact, contact. Or if you want more information, yeah. check out our website or uh, please contact our website in Canada. Sorry, I'm having technical issues. Sorry, <laughs> that's fine. All right. So <laughs> sorry for going over a little bit. No worries. Um, if you guys want to contact Spark. <laughs> oh my god! You got lots of epic music going on there. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Who's up next? Stratacore. Stratacore. I'm so afraid of being buzzed to this now. I'm cracking up. 
<laughs> so I'll, we'll get, I'll, I'll try to get it under two minutes here. So thank you. Um, so some of you know me probably, uh, I'm Dave Arbor. I cover for Stratacore in, in North America as well as Australia. And we are a uh, core facilities management platform. Uh, next slide, please. So today I just wanted to go into uh, some of the, the key items that we've actually introduced here in the last, uh, just actually several weeks. So our background is really, we've been with um, a company since 2011. So we're celebrating our 10 year anniversary, but our, our roots actually go back to a grassroots foundation back in 2003. So we've been around quite a while. Um, so some of the key things that we've done this year is financial transaction review. Um, you can go to the next slide on this one here. Uh, which allows us to actually adjust invoicing prior to doing a draft, which is something that's uh, been highly recommended and requested by a lot of our clients worldwide. So this allows for the easy use of splitting accounts or sharing different accounts or updating accounts before even going to a draft mode and then uh, sending out an invoice. Uh, next slide, please. This slide just shows a little bit of, of kind of what the setup is and the invoicing side, as well as the account side for, for Stratacore PPMS, showcasing on the bottom there how we can actually go ahead and actually add accounts or split accounts as well. Uh, next slide. So another key feature that we've added here recently is multi-system incidents and interventions. So this has been a, a common item that a lot of clients have asked for instead of going through and just updating one instrument at a time, um, we're able now to create actually categories or groups of instruments and then create interventions or, or uh, incidents <laughs> on those all at one time. Uh, next slide, please. Another big uh, feature that we've done recently is sorting and filtering within PPMS. We're, we're trying to make it easier for the admin side to go through and, and uh, kind of move through the modules. So this is showcasing here just under the admins banner uh, the ability to actually filter on key specific facilities. So it makes it much, much easier to move through that. Uh, next slide, please. And here, the other big thing we've done is people that are familiar with Stratacore PPMS, um, we also have added the My PPMS dashboard, which allows a user or an admin to actually go through and see across the entire instance. So they can actually see other facilities that they might have access to and realize, okay, what's going on in those facilities on one page, um, and then be able to interact with those as, as needed. Uh, next slide, please. And then one of the last things we've done uh, this year that we're pushing out is a major price backend upgrade. So we're making it much easier for people to upload new pricing structures, to do calculations within PPMS, and to be able to pull that forward um, with it, within the platform here. So that's all I had. Um, I didn't get buzzed out, which is nice, which is really good. But if you have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out to either myself at DJA at Stratacore.com or just reach out to info. Thank you Thank very you. much, David. I actually don't like using the horn. I feel horrible. So, <laughs> so you guys are helping me. Um, next Thank up you. is Agilent. And I think that they have just a couple videos. So those should be on time. And we'll start with the first one. Yikes. There we go. Play. Core facilities have inputs coming in from so many different places. With Agilent Cross Labs iLab operation software, you can manage all your lab's operations in just one place. And it can meet the needs of all types of shared resource facilities. Track multiple research projects, consumables, and equipment usage. Tie projects and services to billing. Auto-generate invoices. Produce reports. And so much more. Contact us today for your free demo. I think, um, let's see, this video didn't play. So that was the, supposed to be the second one. So I'll play the first one now. What? The Agilent Novosite is a powerful yet affordable benchtop flow cytometer, capable of detecting anywhere from three to 30 fluorescence channels with impressive sensitivity and resolution. Its customizable laser and optical configurations offer a high degree of flexibility while providing complex cell analysis capabilities. And the superior fluidics of Novocyte provide ultra-stable sample delivery with high reproducibility and exceptional precision for high performance at great value. For more advanced applications, Agilent offers the Novocyte Advantion, Novocyte Quantion, and 
the Novocyte Pention flow cytometers. Utilizing anywhere from one to five lasers and up to 30 fluorescence channels with state-of-the-art detector technology. Okay. Um, next up we've got Agendo. So I will put the first slide up and... Thank you. Hi, thanks so much for joining. And today I would like to share with you some smart tools for the, uh, from Agendo for efficient management of scientific facilities that minimize the burden and time spent on tasks and increase the user's productivity. Next, please. So about the bookings, we currently provide a real usage tracking module. And the advantage of this is that you can enable the automatic confirmation of pre-reserved bookings, as well as be automatically notified whether the user has missed the reservation. In addition, Agenda also performs automatic billing, matching the real usage time, the booked time, or a mix of both. Next, please. Another smart tool that we offer is essentially automatic notifications and actions performed upon almost any task from Agendo so that you don't miss a bit and work faster. For example, if you choose to transfer a booking to another user and they accept it, this exchange will be made automatically. The same happens with the waiting list. If the booking slot is deleted, the first person in the waiting list will automatically take it with no further need uh, for action by the manager. Moreover, you can synchronize your bookings with your personal calendar and have a, all appointments in one place. Next, please. Now, to request services periodically, you can just configure a template request to be automatically replicated whenever new ones are needed instead of creating each one from scratch. Next, please. And for the billing part, most importantly, we can use ERP to interlink agenda to your financial system and, per and perform billing automatically, and also incorporate a ledger so that you know in real time when and where the money from the projects was spent. Next, please. Uh, next, please, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> to provide you with all this, we have a fully committed team of scientists and agenda users behind agenda that help, uh, that help us deliver the best user experience and support possible. Next, please. Thank you so much for your attention. I'd like to leave you here with all the institutions that we are proud to support, support worldwide and the channel, channels that you can use to contact us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claudia. Okay. And uh, last, we have cluster markets. So I'm actually, you're our last speaker. I'll let you share your screen real quick. Yep, sounds good. Um, there we go. Hopefully you are able to see it. I'll start. Um, thank you very much. My name is Sam from Cluster Market, and uh, I'll start with just a video that we have um, with a summary of what Cluster Market is. Research labs still rely on outdated systems to manage their instruments. This creates conflicts between researchers and reduces productivity in the lab. Today, there's a better way to get research done. Cluster Market offers a free and easy to use lab management tool that increases transparency and communication in any lab. Scientists can now easily book the instruments they need. But lab managers can also see lab operations with no error. Cluster Market is incredibly easy to set up. And also manage maintenance and servicing of all instruments. The Cluster Market platform gives you the ability to track costs and Cluster Market is free for scientific research labs. Visit clustermarket.com and get started today. All right, that was a whoops. That was a quick uh, overview of what Cluster Market was and um, for some exciting news that we have upcoming uh, next month, we have created a desktop app to control real-time tracking of the instruments and uh, blocking access when you need to do so. So this is just an app that blocks the screen of the desktop that's attached to the instrument and users will have to log in to be able to gain access to the desktop and be able to start using the equipment. And when they finish, they log out and we can track the real time usage and you can compare it to the book time and you can bill appropriately uh, for that. And we've also uh, developed a new UX UI for our mobile users. Um, 
it was a bit clunky and we are the first ones uh, admitting that. So we did something about it and we have more of an app-like uh, desktop page for mobile users. So this will improve um, usability and UX UI so people can truly uh, be able to access all of this data from anywhere. Um, and that's it. So thank you very much for your time. Here's a QR code if you want to uh, get in touch with me, uh, book some time. And thank you very much. Okay, great. So I think now we're down to the fun part. We're going to do a draw, but before we do a draw, we have some announcements. So CCMA elections are coming again. Uh, we postponed our last election as a result of the pandemic, uh, but we are looking for more people to join. So if you want to hang out with people like Kat and I and meet up once a, a month or so, um, please let us know by email. Uh, we're going to look for people to fill two spots. Um, and yeah, the announcements will be coming uh, for the elections soon. And the elections will we are anticipating to happen late in 2022. And a second announcement, which is super exciting, is that we are planning for an in-person meeting. Uh, what I can tell you is that it's going to be a very uh, con meeting that is centric towards flow cytometry, as well as microscopy, core facility managers, and all sorts of workshops that will support you guys in terms of um, troubleshooting and also career development and that sort of thing. We're we're going to be planning for that in early 2023, so you should be hearing some details about it soon. All of those who have attended our meetings will be on our mailing list, so we should be able to get you um, email in, emailed information about this meeting coming up. So one of the prizes that we're going to be giving out today to those who are still in the list is going to be a registration for this meeting, which is going to be in the Ontario area, we believe, either Ontario or Quebec. So Eastern Ontario-ish. Uh, and of course, the everybody loves Amazon cards. Uh, and so we are going to be raffling off some cards. Um, I think Emily was supposed to help us with this. Is she here? Emily, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, you're Kat. Oh, okay. um, what? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, I'm here. So um, yeah, thanks everybody for staying tuned <laughs> throughout the hour. Um, I have put all the names of people who are not vendor associated, I think, into a draw here. Um, the chances are of winning are pretty high. <laughs> we have a lot of vendors online. So um, let me go ahead and uh, let's do the Amazon gift vouchers first. And let yeah, do you want to, are you going to show your screen with the, the random name picker? Yeah, I can. Yeah, sure. More excitement that way. Can I share my <laughs> screen? Uh, you should be able to. Co so let me stop the share here. And I changed Emily's name. And I think there's, I can't do it because I'm a co host. So, Vera, you need to do this. Okay, I need to do this. Emily, where are you in the list? There you are. Okay. okay, you are now going to have the power to share. Okay, great. Um, drum roll. Drum roll, Kat, have you got any sound effects? <laughs> oh my gosh, so many screens open. No, I think we need someone for the CCMA just for sound effect editing. So <laughs> Emily, why don't you put four in there because we're gonna pick four, right? So yes. the random, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's do it all at once. Let me do four. So here. we found this little app online and thought it might be fun to use it. Let me pick a random name. We'll get started here. Woohoo! Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Ah, yes! Congratulations, okay. Derek Davies. Oh my gosh, Derek, are you gonna? <laughs> Derek Davies, Derek Router, Don Tranny, and Hugo Martinez Gomez. This doesn't seem too random with all these D names, but um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a fix. Yeah, okay. <laughs> At least I didn't fix it. <laughs> I didn't even know Derek was in the room. Okay, well, <laughs> oh, I knew Derek Router was in the room. <laughs> is Derek, but wait, Derek, Derek Davies, are you in the room? 
he was here no. earlier. He may be gone now. Okay, so I think we need to draw again then if he's not here because the rules were that it was we had to, to be here. The end. There you go. We need one more card. So we is or sorry, Hugo, are you in the room? Do I see Hugo? Yeah, he yes, just commented. He's good. Hugo awesome. Can... Congratulations, Hugo. Derek, I see you in the list. Don. Don is also in the list. Don is here. Okay. So yes. We need to pick one more. Can, can I just make one yeah. thing? Those of you that have won that are here, please put your email address in the chat. Yes. yes. Please keep track. We of need to questions. contact you to give you the prize. Okay. Gonna... If you want, if you don't want your email just in the general chat, you can personal personal message to myself Asia, or Vera. Yeah, I have everybody's email, so as long as you guys keep track of the names, we should be good. All right. Um, Done. All right. Let's pick another name. This is for the last one. Last name. All oh, right, is this person here, Gokan Sahin? Gokan? Yes, very good. <laughs> is he here? <laughs> I love that All response. Set. <laughs> and we actually have one more prize. Okay, that's it. Um, so the last prize is complimentary registration to our next in-person meeting. Very exciting. Um, hopefully coming up in February next year. So let's do another person here. Um, pick a random name. Let's go. Okay, Stephanie Tucker. Stephanie online. Looks like she's still here. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Great. Congratulations. Well, Stephanie. We will meet you in person, Stephanie. Hope you are going to be able to join us. So please uh, enter your email addresses to Vera or Asia in the chat so that we can get these gift cards out to you and registration. Well, that will be next year, but we'll we'll have to remember. Keep you posted. Keep you posted in 2023. Awesome. Right. Well, awesome. it's been a really great series, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us to the very end. Uh, we really enjoyed it and uh, looking forward to more in-person interactions coming up. Oh, yes. I'm teched out. This is it. This did me in. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys, for arranging it all and you did a great job. Hour of my life. <laughs> Thank you, Giselle, for coming.